welcome to another episode of the Cellcast. Shorts. Joining me today is a man who just wanted a single cookie. Welcome, Aaron. Why, thank you, Drew, for having me on again. And I would also like to introduce the lead person of this podcast, whose name I already said, but he is a man who has no qualms taking the final cookie. <laughs> it's the final cookie. Yeah, that, that goes real well with drop and roll playing in the background. <laughs> uh, so yes, today, as y'all know, because I don't remember which one of these episodes is going first. Uh, Jacob decided he needed to get married, and I'm giving him some time off. And depending on when this goes, this is either after he's been eased the wedding, or while we're down in Houston at a bachelor party. Or maybe I'm just on the ocean somewhere, who knows? Uh, so, yeah, that's what's going on. That's why you don't hear Jacob, so... But yeah, he'll be back soon, or I'll be back soon. You're definitely doing a good job of maintaining your sanity. Uh, you'd be amazed how much of a vacation I think we might both need. <laughs> but yeah, uh, why don't we just go ahead and jump into the short that we are reviewing tonight. If I've got this timed when the music's going to stop. Very close. All right, there we go. The following is a spoiler-filled review for the short Snack Attack. Listener discretion is advised. So, yeah, this was written and directed by Andrew Caldelago. And if I mispronounced your name, sir, I apologize. And I'm probably going to mispronounce the name of the only cast member in this, too. Montserrat Espadale. Okay, here's a stupid question I have for everyone involved. I can pronounce Japanese names pretty dang well, but Spanish names or Italian names that should be closer to my language? I can't do jack squat. What's wrong with me? Um, <laughs> well, we did say shorts, so I don't know if we have enough time to go into that, Drew. Fair enough. It's just a question that crossed my mind with these names <laughs> that apparently should be closer to my own language and I can't pronounce them. I'm not fairly certain I'm not pronouncing them right. Do you know what's wild? You actually, I have a different name than both of the ones that you did. <laughs> See, I, I pulled mine off of IMDb, so. Okay, I pulled mine off of YouTube. Like, the one that had the most views, I figured this was the guy who yeah. maybe either produced or shared it. Um, his name is, and I actually looked up how to pronounce his last name phonetically so I didn't sound incompetent. Or oh, offensive, yeah, cause I guess. Because that's pretty much what I did. <laughs> um, his name, the name I found was uh, uh, Eduardo Verostegui. Okay. And so I don't know, but it, hey, one of these three people is responsible for this short. I'm assuming IMDB's got it right, just because they've had it right more times than not, but you never know. I, I have been wrong before. I will be wrong again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this short was released by Metanoia Films. Uh, the summary for this uh, waiting to board the train, an old lady just wants to eat her cookies in peace. But hijinks ensue when a teenager on the platform next to her seems intent on sharing them too. And the only trivia I've got for this is that when zoomed in on the boy's phone, it is seen that his mom is asking him what he is doing. The boy has responded, just messing with this old lady. However, he is not messing with the old lady. The old lady realizes on the train that she was taking the boy's cookies, and the boy nicely gave them to her. That was the only trivia I could find for this. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, Why don't we go into our first likes? Uh, what's your first like, Aaron? Uh, my first like is how determined this grandma is to get her cookies. Oh because, yeah. You know, when she goes to the vending machine that gets snagged as has probably happened to every single person listening at least once. Yeah. It's I always annoying that. because it's like, no, I'm not trying to break the machine. Kevin, I'm trying to get my Cheetos. I lodged. Yeah. Kevin. You know? So yeah, Kevin, Ugh, there's always a Kevin. Uh, apologies to anyone that's listening to this podcast named Kevin. 
yeah, the third Ghidorah head's just not happy with you right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Also, as a brief aside, I don't know who's in charge of keeping that vending machine filled, but there may have been a slight oversight. Might have been, yes. <laughs> One package Somebody did it. not make it to the to that place in time to to refill that snack machine. In fairness, that that train station was pretty empty. But anyway, so the mich- the pack of cookies gets snagged, and she is trying to bang on. You know, she's a little old lady. She's two foot three, I think, probably. Mm-hmm. Like she's so tiny, like. Like there are the hobbits can look down at her, which is wild. Yeah. Um, so, so she walks away in frustration, and then with one final bout of uh, adamancy, she runs in and just clobbers the machine with her shoulder, and it dislodges the mm-hmm. cookies. To which she gleefully takes and puts it to her purse, and then heads outside to sit at the bench. So yeah, I think my first like is like just the tenacity of this old woman. Yeah. It does do give you a good idea as to what this woman's willing to put up with just for just a couple of cookies. Indeed. That she paid for. Yes. Uh, so my first like for this actually is, I would say, uh, the, the character designs of the old lady and the uh, the kid. I, I, they are two different kind of... I, you see this this kind of thing all the time with the sh- with, with comedy duos where the tall guy and the short guy, except this time it's the tall kid and a short woman. Yeah, and uh, it, you give, it, they they're able to bounce off of each other in just these cookies like so well. Uh, though normally I think the 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 tall guy is the smart one and the short one's the comedic one, and this seems to be like the other way around. Maybe I don't know. I may have that backwards. But yeah, I just love the character designs on this and how instantly you know what's going on, even if uh, they obviously don't. So yeah, that's my first like is the character designs. That's a good like. And uh, just to comment, I also like the character designs quite a bit. Uh, They're very catching. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a good use of color and uh, good shapes all throughout. Um, My second like is... um, Man, it's a good thing I'm not flying because <laughs> the, at the rate I'm losing my happy thought, I would have plummeted to the earth. <laughs> Sorry, I realized my Bluetooth speaker was on. <laughs> no problem. I thought there was just another sound on your sound bar. No, no, no. So the second thing I like about this is even though like there are papers and like on the phone, you can see it's in English. Mm hmm. When she goes to berate the teenager for taking one of her cookies, um, and what she thinks is one of her cookies, you know, he's got his rock music playing in his ear, and she's just gibberishing, like speaking gibberish at him. So I like how they kind of, even though there is like English written on the papers and all that, mm-hmm. they they made this short to kind of speak in, to kind of transcend language, because... Yeah, everyone understands the situation. It's it's very easy to understand. Um, the perceived scenario is this woman set her cookies down, and she'd had one, and then this young teenager just started stealing her cookies until you actually feel like what, figure out what the twist is or the twist is revealed. Yeah, of this short. So I do like how it it's transcending language to kind of tell a more situational story uh, that doesn't really require words to communicate uh, what's going on. Hmm. Yeah, my, my my second like for this, and this is going to sound like totally off the wall, but I like that it's a train station and not a bus station because <laughs> I like trains and it was just nice to see. I don't, I don't, being here in America, we don't have a lot of train stations. And I, I, I know this sounds stupid, but uh, I just like that it was a, that was a train she was getting on instead of a bus. It just felt different for me. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, trains are great. Um, they're definitely, we don't use them near and much as America as other countries do. Yeah, and I have but, opinions on that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to travel by train sometimes somewhere because I heard it is a fun experience. I heard it can I, be a little bit more costly, but like the experience is worth it. So I have, at least on Amtrak, ridden from 
it basically was a it was a two hour trip because it was uh, from Mineola to Dallas. Okay, and yeah. back. And that was kind of a fun two hours, but it would have been faster overall for me to just drive because not because the train wasn't going fast enough, but because we got held up like so many times waiting for other trains. Yeah. Because the Amtrak does not have priority when it gets out of its little short walt windows. But can you imagine the being the person that has to coordinate all that train traffic? That is why they use a computer. One slight oversight. Yeah, but man, I mean uh, computers can make mistakes, right? Oh yeah, I agree. Hey, you, you know the phrase to err is human, not mis- and to mis- really foul up requires a computer. Sorry, let me be uh, PC here. <laughs> By that, I mean personal computer. Um, well, I mean it's going to be a mainframe, so right. Uh, I was going to say it, it, it made a mistake. Um, instead of a mistake, it made a miscalculation. Yeah, miscalculation is probably a better term, but <laughs> either way, the BPC that was I was supposed to blurt that out more cohesively. <laughs> Dude, I'm no only, worries. I'm only okay at, at comedy, just okay. No worries, dude. Uh, but what's <laughs> your third like for this? So my third like is there's an obvious theme to this episode or to this short, and that being that appearances aren't everything. Mm-hmm. So when she and now understand the, the woman is older, she just knocked the crud out of herself, sh- shoulder checking the vending machine. Yeah. So, you know, um, and she's already, you know, again, old. So her mental faculties may not be what they once were. Now, they didn't do anything to convey this in the show. But like if you think about just the progression of life and mental faculties as you age, um, you know, she for some reason did not realize that when she grabbed that pack of cookies, that was sitting on the bench. They were not hers. They were in fact, the teenager that was sitting next to her. So, but even before she sat down, she took one look at the teenager and had like a negative reaction to him saying like, Oh, here's a hooligan. I mean, he had a Mohawk Mm -hmm. and all that. Otherwise he didn't really look too bad. He was just, you know, just a kid being young. Um, so you think throughout the whole thing that, you know, this guy's just stealing her cookies, like taking advantage of her, uh, her being an elder and no, in fact, she made a mistake and did not, it, it was taking his cookies and he was even kind enough when she was protesting him, taking the last one, he even broke it in half and split it with her. Yeah. And her reaction to that was to crush that piece he gave her that half into crumbs and then like drop it right on the bench next to him. Mm-hmm. So in a way, like from the, from the guy's perspective, like he was giving her a lot of grace and being a lot, really patient with her. And then she gets in and sits down, gets her ticket punched. And because she got her ticket punched, she had to open her purse. And when she opened her purse, she was like, Jeez. Oh my God, here are my cookies. And then it, everything replayed and yeah. then and like a rewind. And then it's like, Oh, she was saying his cookies. I like his initial reaction when he took one. It's like he made that that gesture like he was like, um, okay, I guess this is happening. <laughs> yeah. So I really like it. Well, I mean, we've both, I think, probably been in that situation where an older person is assuming we're going to do something and then we have no idea what they want. And then we kind of try to placate them and it doesn't work, you know? Right. And yeah, I, I kind of get that's the feeling he had at that point. It's like, I'm trying to do whatever it is you want, lady, but whatever. Yeah, like, I'm hungry too. You know, yeah. the, you're not the only these one. These are that's my cookies. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, I, I like how it, the underlying message is uh, appearances aren't everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes the situation is not what you think it is. And it kind of, I think it teaches you, or at least it showed me, hey, maybe I need to slow down and be more aware of my environment sometimes and my own, like, have Mm self-awareness. So, yeah, that's my third like. I mean, my third like is kind of on the same line because it it really does feel like, uh, well, this feels like it's actually based a little on a true story. (laughs) <laughs> maybe from the kid's point of view. I don't know. It feels like maybe the animator on this must have been like sitting at the, waiting to get on his train one day and he was eating some cook, eating, a, eating something from a snack and an old woman 
absolutely wanted his for snack sure. for whatever reason, whether she understood it was his or thought it was hers or not. I don't know, but it kind of, you could just feel that frustration kind of from his point of view. And, and even though, and I think I'm reading a little into it, but the fact that he does it from her point of view where, cause that's the only way you're going to get any come up and uh, she's going to come get any comeuppance in this. The fact that she stole his cookies, despite the fact she thought he was stealing her cookies. And admittedly, when you're first watching that, before you understand that twist, you're going, dude, what are you doing? Those are her cookies. <laughs> And so he he played that uh, misinformation, I thought, very well between these two characters. Yeah, there was a lot of misdirection. Yeah. And the fact that he even had the kid wave back to her on the train after she had crumbled the cookie in his face. It's like, yeah, fine, whatever. See you later, uh, lady. And she throws that uh, that window screen down. She gets her ticket punched, sees it's her cookies. She opens it up and then kind of waves back. It's like, hey, yeah, I'm the idiot here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> An idiot's the nice word I'm using for this podcast. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I, think I, but, I, think I, I think I get the spirit of what you were saying. Yeah. 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 I think you understand. And also, yeah, I, it feels very likely that a scenario like this has happened to at least one set of people in the yeah. world. And, 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 and th- there is so, uh, you know, in, there is so much uh, friction between all the generations today. And that's kind of what they're showing here. But the fact that they kind of reconcile at the end, I thought was kind of a nice uh, breath of fresh air and not just people get angry at each other at the end of the end of the conflict. Right. It was just it was innocent. It was an innocent yeah. little short about. Appearances aren't everything, and mm-hmm. to be more aware of your environment, and sometimes kindness comes from a place you did not expect. Exactly. So before we get into our dislikes, I am going to do the bu- play the bumpers right quick and uh, pay, pay some bills, and then on the other side, we will get to talking about what we don't like about this. This podcast is a proud member of Culture Box. Whether you enjoy geeky reviews, comedy, or original fiction, you can open up the Culture Box and find something excellent for your soul. Point your web browser to culturebox.media. This week, we suggest checking out Stunning and Brave. Each week, hosts Chris Cowan and Nate Henderson confess their privilege spotlighting stunning social media posts and fabricating outrage, all while keeping you super woke and enlightened. They will make you laugh. That's right. You have no choice. Check out Stunning and Brave at stunningandbrave.net. The Cellcast would also like to thank the following patrons. Ashley and Francisco Ruiz, PaulJPowers.com, and the Monster Island Film Vault. If you would like to have your name shouted out during our uh, during this part of the podcast, some special art from Jacob, and uncut episodes of the Cellcast, you can donate to us on Patreon. So, Aaron, what is your first dislike for the short? Well, the first dislike is kind of the other side of the coin I was talking about, where there's a lot of um, misunderstanding and a lot of, you know, assumptions. And I think that kind of leads me to my first dislike as well. And this isn't a, a dislike of the short itself. It's more of a dislike of how humans how people have a tendency to judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, back in when I was a young person, if I saw someone tall with long hair and tattoos, they frightened me and like piercings and all that. Now I I know the big long haired tattooed people with piercings. And there's some of the sweetest teddy bears like I've ever met. (laughs) Like, and so it just, it really goes to show that, you know, she, the grandmother or the old woman, I guess we'll say, we don't know if she had kids or even grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the grand, I'll call her, yeah, uh, came work. up to this, this young man and saw that he had a skull on his shirt, right? It was a skull on his shirt, I think. I think so. And then he had, but it was he, also he looked, an orange shirt, I think. He looked like the part of a punk rock kid. He really did look punk rock. He even kind of had gay earrings and all that. Yeah. So she immediately the exact oh, opposite of what her generation would consider acceptable. Exactly. So there's that clash of different um, 
uh, generations. Wow. And, you know, I, she just, she had assumptions about it. And he, even though she started stealing his cookies, he, you know, was kind enough to not really berate her for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did, you know, tug of war for that last one, but then still felt bad and g- g- cr- cracked it, cracked it again, half and gave her half, even though it was his yeah. cookies that he purchased. So, yeah, my dislike is that uh, sometimes people make false assumptions about um, their surroundings and their peers. Mm-hmm. So my first dislike for this, and this is going to, uh, we've kind of already talked about this. Uh, the fact that that particular train station on that particular side of town, despite being pretty much like no one there for there to be uh, uh, any rush that that could have emptied that snack machine as much as it was, uh, that snack machine was empty because someone wasn't doing their job. Right, and, and the and the thing is, is as while that does kind of show you how uh, lucky she must have felt for finding that happening to see that there was only one thing of cookies and was able to get get those cookies after she you know uh, shouldered the thing. It for the most part is not even a necessary detail. I guess it could have been a full thing, but I don't know. I'm I'm kind of nitpicking at this. Uh, so yeah, my first dislike is someone needs to do their dang job <laughs> and fill that snack machine. Yeah, I get it. I, you know, man, it's entirely possible. Let's see. Okay. There was the grand, the teenager, the teenager's mother that he was chatting with through text, yeah. the ticket puncher and conceivably someone driving the train. So conceivably. That's, that's, that's like, Four to five people. Maybe that's all that's left in the world is those five people. Like, <laughs> that's a sad life. It is a sad life. Like, where is she going? No one knows. It's like last man on earth type shenanigans. Just a small town grandma. Live. She took the midnight train going anywhere. <laughs> flawless. <laughs> yeah, flawless. We'll say completely, that. Completely nailed it. <laughs> Go to American Idol now. You got this. <laughs> Please. I could sing circles around Simon Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a grumpy Gus he is. Yeah. Uh, what's your second oh, dislike? My second dislike. Um, man. I, there's, I mean, the, the, the short's really good. I think it's. Anything I can think of is going to yeah. be a, a nitpick. Um, and, and this is not the first time on these we've had to nitpick, so don't feel bad. Yeah, no, I think, well, I feel like I've nitpicked a couple of times on here from the previous episodes that I've been on. So um, let's see. Um, I think it would have been probably nice to have at least a few more people. And there maybe like a ticket attendant or like a mother and a son. Or, or just some crowd. Know. Yeah, or a dog, you know, like laying you down. Well, I'm trying to think of, because I mean, this feels like it was probably a student assignment uh, when they when this was made. Like maybe it was their uh, final exam piece project. And I could see maybe with limited resources not being able to do like a pet or something like that. But I could see maybe like... There's, there's got you could have there's got to be like some standard rigging models for the 3D for like a random generic people, you know, easily enough. But that's just an idea on my end. Yeah. So yeah, the, I think the the lack of extra characters uh, was probably and again this is a nitpick. Oh um, yeah, because it made sense. If there was too many other people, then it would have distracted from what was going on with the main two people. Right, and, and I think you could get away with it if you just had just a couple more people in that train station. Right, but, uh, just yeah, like just sitting waiting on their trains inside instead of out by the bench with where she and the other kid are. Or maybe right. like one, you see somebody like in the background on the train when she gets on, just something right, like that. Right, yeah, something, something. Yeah, and that's pretty just- much my second dislike. Also, it's. It, like like we were joking earlier, it feels like 
there's like five people in this world and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> on in this one little town. And let's face it, the old woman's not long for this world. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just feel like I w- wanted this world to feel a little bit more lived in, I guess, and a little more alive than it, it does. So Right. I, th- I feel for this, it kind of needed to be. I've, we we saw a lot of, sh- me and Jacob watched a lot of these shor- lot of shorts back in uh, January uh, that were these student-run shorts. And they all at least felt like when it felt like they were supposed to be uh, lived in worlds that there were actually people living in those worlds. And when it was supposed to be dead, you know, there was not many people there, but this just feels like they didn't get to the crowd in time before they had to turn the project in. But that's yeah, like, like entirely, we're saying. It's a minor nitpick. The, the, you really possible. need the crowd. It's just, it would feel nice if this was, if you're in a big city, it should feel like it's a full city. Well, even a small town would yeah. conceivably, yeah. So if they had just made it a little bit more lived in, I think it would have been. If if you want to even do it even cheaper, just put sound effects of cars passing. Oh, yeah. That would be even easier. You don't, don't even have need. to do anything. It's just don't throw in a sound it. effect every once in a while. Like a car driving past. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It'd be, it'd be super easy. But they weren't able to do that either, apparently, so. Uh, what's your third dislike for this? Ah, my third and final, and again, uh, listeners, th- nitpicking. <laughs> so this short was made, if I'm not mistaken, about seven years ago. About. Something like that. Um, the animation is pretty good quality. Um, it is not anything that Pixar or DreamWorks would put out. Um, a lot of the movements were pretty... Uh, pretty fluid but there was a bit of rigidness to it i think mm-hmm. um and honestly like uh, yeah it's just nitpicking again uh i i don't think everything has to have a pixar budget to no. tell a good story and this is definitely a video that supports that statement is yeah is this short so yeah, that's my that's my third and final nip. Yeah, I, I I can see what you're saying because it does feel like they're using older tools than was probably available generally at that time. And if it is a school budget thing, or if it's on a school budget, okay, I can see that maybe they hadn't had a chance to upgrade to the the newest stuff yet. But uh, so yeah, my third and final dislike, and this is probably the most nitpicky thing of nitpicky things. Uh, because you you've got, you have a lot of you had a good point there with this not having not felt it aged well, but I thought it was very strange that this guy's cell phone had the cords on what basically the the long side of the phone. Oh yeah, you're in. right. He had it turned sideways and he plugged it in from yeah. The which on, on one hand I kind of like because a lot of us tend to use <coughs> well. A, I want people to be used take when they're taking camera pictures to you take it that direction because that's how the cameras pictures are supposed to look, not vertical. But that's beside the point. What this reminded me of is like it reminded me of like a PlayStation Vita or a PlayStation Portable when it, with with the ports on the bottom or even a Switch for that matter. Right. Uh, but that's what been long before the Switch. But uh, I, I don't know if I really liked them put doing that or not. Because on one hand, I kind of like the idea of it, this, the port being over there and him holding it a long ways uh, or horizontal, more horizontal than vertical. But at the same time, that kind of distracted me from the rest, from what was kind of going on at the moment. Because I went, that's a weird feature on this phone. Why isn't the thing on the bottom? Because I, and I guess this is what, 2005, 2000, I mean, sorry, 2015, 2016, I think. Yeah, probably. And by that time, yeah, the smartphone had pretty much been standardized. But, and I could see maybe this kid's using a slightly older phone. Plus, uh, when she pulled the uh, headphones out, A, that phone had a headphone jack. I want that back, uh, cell phone makers. Uh, Yeah, right. (laughs) Instead of us having to use Bluetooth or uh, uh, having another little dongle hanging out of the bottom of it, like it's got a pigtail. Uh, but, uh, but the thing is, I remember having phones like that, that 
when you unplug it and immediately it would should have started playing the music over the speaker and it doesn't and i'm going that that's odd because granted i know they don't want to pay for any licensed music because this is probably this is a student film probably but i I don't know. It just threw me there for a second. It's his, his cell phone is not like an in make or break this short in any way, shape or form. I'm just actually just trying to come up with a third dislike if we're being honest. No, I but, understand. I, uh, I yeah, really... that's, that, that is going to be my third and final dislike for this short. I was having to reach deep inside my quiver of negativity. To... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what, are, right. what are you going to rate this thing? You know, um, it's simplistic. It's just under five minutes. Um, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It is, I think, the perfect length for a short. Mm-hmm. Um, and I enjoy the characters. I enjoy them. You know what? I didn't bring this up, but I actually really like the music. Mm-hmm. It did as well. It kind of had like a, a kind of a, a carnival festival, uh, festive. I'm trying to think of what festiveness to it that's what i mean. yeah sorry um dude no worries yeah so uh very you know a very kind of ragtime not ragtime uh what would you call it or maybe ragtime was the right anyway sorry <laughs> it's very it's very charming the music yeah. it's older you know like older gramophone mm-hmm. style like so um I would rate this one. I'm going to go ahead and rate it an eight out of 10. Okay. Um, it's it, again, it doesn't overstay its welcome. The characters are fun. Uh, there is a message and uh, the animation is of good quality, not the highest quality, of course, but it's of good quality. Mm-hmm. So yeah, eight, eight out of 10. I think I'm going to rate this one a seven. Uh, not that it's really that bad, to be honest, but I mean, it is like, like, like we said, the animation is stiff. It's not quite holding up t- like some other stuff that was made by other p- places from this time period. It's got a great story to it and it's, and, and it works in that way. But yeah, I'm, I'm just going to rate it a seven because it's, it's good, but it's not, you know, great. Yeah. Not perfect. Right. So that's pretty much the end of the review. Before we get to any shameless self-promotion, uh, is there anything you want to talk about? Uh, yeah. You know what? I would like to uh, wish hearty congratulations to Jacob and Ashley. Congratulations on tying the knot. You guys are a great couple. And Jacob, I've known you for a long time. You're one of the best men I've ever known. And um, take care of Ashley. And Ashley, definitely take care of him because... He's uh, worthy of love and devotion. <laughs> so, yes, congratulations. All righty, then. Uh, is there anything you want to promote? I know you used to be on another show, but I don't know if you've got anything right now. So, yes, uh, for those who remember me, hello again. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Aaron, and I am a former member of a podcast called Banter Banter. It's a podcast I started with some friends several years ago. Two friends live in Austin, Mike and Manny. They are still going, actually. They just started season six. And I have since left and have kind of struck out on my own. I honestly just needed kind of a break from everything. Uh, I am working on a new project with some friends. And we're hoping to air some of that content uh, this summer and I'm sure once we do, I will try to include Jacob and Drew in some capacity. I would appreciate uh, with, that. Yeah, you know, cross-promoting. It's great. Exactly. So, yeah, um, if you want to give Banter Banter a listen, uh, it's just a kind of easy listening Monday morning show about three, formerly three, now two lovable goofballs trying to figure out our, our path in life and how to navigate the ever crushing depression that's descending upon this world. I blame COVID, but anyway. Yeah, COVID didn't help. Among other right. among other things. There's a lot going on. It's a it's a it's a it's a melting pot of different things. Oh yes. So yes, but if you are interested in following me, uh you can follow me on X at I am at eight bit wizard. The eight is Roman numerical. And I'll be posting 
my new project there at some point soon. So I have never updated our outro to actually change Twitter to its new name. But I have decided since they've never said the name of this new service out loud or this renamed service out loud that I'm going to go to Kingdom Hearts with it and call it uh, it's called the service key. Okay. And there's a key in your background. That's perfect. Yeah. Cuz C E C H I is how you say the uh, is how you pronounce the Latin letter that X is based on. Anyway, that's a stupid joke. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. No, I I get it. <sighs> so, e? yes, because because Leonard Nimoy explained it so well in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this has been Drew. This has been Aaron. And we'll catch you in the next frame. You can follow Jacob on his Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. His Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterboxed page at G George 759. His Twitter at G George 759. And Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at the Cellcast Podcast. On Twitch at the Cellcast Gaming. On YouTube at Cellcast. On Twitter at Cast underscore Cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts. Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us, and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell, with a single L.